Welcome. Uh, my name is Jade. I use they, them pronouns. Um, welcome to um, this talk on vendor neutral GPU programming in Chapel. Um, I work on one of the core development teams of Chapel at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Uh, Chapel is an open source project, and we actively um, develop in the open um, with community engagement. Um, and I'd like to share some of our GPU uh, support. So, GPUs are everywhere, um, especially with um, AI and the demand for GPUs and high performance GP GPU computing is only getting more and more prevalent. Uh, but the problem is, it's kind of hard to program them. You've got lots of different vendors with their own interests in getting people to use their software stacks. Um, and there do exist these open software stacks, um, some more portable solutions that work across vendors. Um, kind of one problem with a lot of these is, is that they are very C and C++ based. And you need to be a C and C++ programmer to get good performance out of them. Um, that's kind of a non-starter for a scientist who has no idea how to write C++ code. Um, and we still want to be able to get GPU parallelism and high performance computing without needing to start writing C and C++. The other thing is, is that we have GPUs in our laptops and we have GPUs in data centers, um, but if you want to scale across thousands of nodes in a data center, you need something else beyond C and C++ and CUDA, for example. Uh, you need MPI or some other library to kind of glue everything together. So that is really where Chapel sits, where we are an open source alternative for productive distributed shared memory GPU programming in a vendor neutral way. And it's not just GPU programming, it's parallel computing with GPU abstractions. So that, this is Chapel, where it's a modern parallel programming language. Um, it's portable and scalable, but there's also good performance, and it enables developers to develop on their laptops and run in a data center on a supercomputer. So we want to make general parallel programming easy, um, and we want to make it productive for developers. So, like I said, Chapel works everywhere. Um, I can write Chapel code on my MacBook here. Um, I can debug it, test it, develop it, do everything I want on my laptop, and take the exact same code to a supercomputer, run the same code, and scale it out. I can test my GPU code on my laptop, go to a, a data center node with GPUs, and test it there. Um, it makes distributed programming easier. So we have high-level Chapel concepts that let you write very readable array notations and scale that out to nodes and GPUs. Um, but we also have lower-level constructs to let you kind of dive into the details. And of course, Chapel is GPU ready. So all of these features for CPU parallelism work with GPUs. Um, and it's vendor neutral. We currently support both uh, NVIDIA and AMD and are looking to add Intel support in the future. So there are a number of applications that use Chapel. Uh, Chapel is a general purpose programming language. Um, I'll highlight the second one from the right or on the left on the top there, Arcuda, um, which is one of our largest applications, which is open source and publicly available. Um, which lets you do large EDA, um, exploratory data analysis on data sets. Um, Arcuda also happens to be one of our active GPU efforts, um, where a lot of these codes use Chapel's GPU features to get even more parallelism out of their code. So I've told you all these great things about Chapel. Um, let's actually go look at what some GPU Chapel code looks like. So this is a very simple Chapel program um, that is multi-threaded. There is no GPUs yet in this code. Um, and I'll kind of walk through what this code looks like. And we'll add a few things and turn this into GPU code. So the first thing, that very top, um, is this config const. So Chapel lets you create these configurable runtime constants. Um, and this lets us put constants in our code and then tweak them at runtime, which Chapel will automatically generate um, argument parsers on the command line for you. Um, you'll see there's this weird little here.max task par. What that is, is we are getting the maximum task concurrency for a node. So 
in Chapel here represents the currently executing thing. Um, in this case, it's a CPU. So we're saying we are currently executing on our laptop, and I want to get how many physical CPUs my laptop has. Um, this is a, not the most amount of threads that Chapel can create, um, but it's a, usually a good number for the best performance. Next one is um, this declaration of an array, where we're using Chapel's array syntax to define an array indexed uh, from 0 to n minus 1. Um, Chapel arrays can be indexed by anything you would like. So if you are a Fortran programmer, if any of those still exist, uh, you can have your arrays indexed by 1, um, or you can be sane and have it indexed by 0. Uh, um, so we have our arrays here. Um, and now, getting down to creating these tasks. So in Chapel, a coforall loop is an order-independent parallel loop, where I'm saying every single iteration of this loop is going to execute at the same time as its own separate task. So in this case, I'm looping through this n threads, and I'm creating n threads, um, number of tasks. And each iteration of the loop is its own separate executing task. Um, and finally, we get to this slightly weird looking syntax where we're setting a chunk of the array to the current task ID. Um, so the way this array syntax is doing is it's taking a slice of the array and it's just assigning it to a scalar um, value. And what's happening behind the scenes is a chapel feature called promotion. And promotion essentially allows us to write this kind of nice array syntax but get um, parallel features. So on a CPU, this might turn into a vectorized loop that assigns a scalar value to the array. Uh, it might turn into a number of different tasks that are going to do everything in parallel. Or on a GPU, this is going to turn into a kernel launch. So all this code is great, but again, there's no GPUs here yet. And so that's where we're going to take it to the next slide where all I've done here is fill in a couple extra lines here. Um, the two notable ones here is this do on here.gpus. So on is a construct in Chapel that tells the runtime to migrate execution somewhere else. In this case, we're migrating from the CPU to the GPU. So now all the code that is inside of this block is executing conceptually on the GPU. Uh, in this case, we're querying the number of GPUs. Um, so again, here is our currently executing machine, um, and we have the GPUs array. We're getting the very first GPU from it. Um, and then this little bit extra piece here where we need to copy the array that we're going to work on the GPU between the host and device. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, GPU memory is usually distinct from the CPU memory. Um, and if you want to operate on data, you need to copy it back and forth from the CPU to the GPU. Um, so that's what we're doing here, where in Chapel, it just looks like a normal array assignment. And again, we still have that same computation where we have GPU array equals TID is that exact same computation from before. It's just now happening through a variable. So we're creating a copy of a small chunk of the array into GPU array using promotion to get GPU array equals TID, and then we are copying it back to the CPU. So having this GPU code is great, but it, it helps to be able to understand where the kernel launches are happening, where you're actually executing on the GPU, or maybe where you're failing to execute on a GPU. Um, and so Chapel provides a number of different diagnostics. In this case, there's GPU diagnostics, where before this parallel iteration, um, I start verbose GPU, and then afterwards stop verbose GPU. And what this is going to do is it's going to turn on a bunch of different printing in Chapel's runtime, which is not only going to tell you um, when kernels are being launched, but how many are being launched, how much data is being used, and exactly what line of Chapel code is causing a kernel launch to happen. And we'll actually see that in just a moment. So I said that Chapel runs 
everywhere and with many different kinds of GPUs. Uh, this is one of our internal testing machines at Hewlett Packard. Um, and I can prove to you that it does have GPUs. Um, this is printing out the configuration for the current running chapel. You'll see here we're using the AMD GPU mode. So I'm going to run some code with AMD GPUs. Um, this is the same code from the slide um, with a little extra do print added so we can turn on and off the printing of the array. And I'll go ahead and I'll show the compilation command, but I won't actually compile it right now. Uh, simple dot chapel. All right, so this will not only compile chapel, um, but it will turn on all the optimizations to get all of that performance goodness. Um, and I'll go ahead and run this. This is our simple CPU example. It's just printing out um, an array computation. Um, if I want to change how much data we're working on, um, I can set a flag here. So n per thread. For fun, we'll do 100. And it's going to print a lot more stuff. Um, I'll also run it with different numbers of threads. So even though there's a lot more threads than 30 on this machine, I can run it with 30. And I can run it with even more threads if I so choose. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the GPU example here, where, again, it's the same code from the slide. Um, I've just got it copied into my editor here. And I'll go ahead and run that as well. And now you see the output of um, verbose GPU. So you see all these different kernel launches. I lost my mouse there a second. OK. Um, all the different kernel launches, where they, these are the device copies. So we're copying to and from the GPU. And way up here, you see these kernel launches from some internal modules from Chapel. So this is where you sort of see the uh, power of Chapel coming into play, where I've got implicit GPU execution happening for me. So I didn't need to know anything about writing a kernel. I just got. Um, my GPU computation built in by the chapel runtime. At the same time, I can write more explicit um, GPU kernels, which we'll see a little bit later. Um, and I'm going to turn off printing the array because it does get a little in the way and just show you that it does run at much larger scales. So we'll give it big amounts per thread, say 1,000. Um, and we see significantly more copies to and from the host, as well as more kernel launches. So coming back to the slides here. So let's take that very, very simple GPU example and turn it into a multi-GPU example. So I'll, it's very common in a lot of systems to not just have one GPU, but have four GPUs, eight GPUs. And we want to be able to leverage them all with the same clear, concise syntax. So there's very little differences in the code here, except I have now renamed a bunch of these variables. So whereas before it was n threads, now it's n GPUs. Instead of n per threads, it's n per GPU. And there's kind of two key differences here, where the first is not highlighted, but it's n GPUs is equal to here.gpus.size. So I am initializing a default value for the number of GPUs to be the current number of GPUs that I have. Um, and the second is that I'm creating a task for each GPU. So I'm doing a parallel iteration over the number of GPUs. That's the co for all. And then I'm saying, in each iteration, go to your respective GPU and start executing. So however many GPUs this system has, this will execute onto each individual GPU. And then the same body of the loop is the same, um, where we've got that copy to and from the GPU. And so this is all the code changes I needed to do to turn our previous simple example from a single GPU example into a multiple GPU example. And again, let's go see that work. Um, but this time, I have to leave our little development environment with AMD 
And instead, uh, this is an AWS node running an NVIDIA T4. Um, there's four NVIDIA T4s on this node. So I can take the exact same code and run it on NVIDIA. Oh, we can't see that yet. Okay, now you can see that. Um, okay, so I have my multi-GPU example here, um, and I'm on AWS with four nodes. If I run NVIDIA SMI, you can see here's my four Tesla T4 nodes, and I'll run, we'll run the same command as before, print chapel ENV, and now we're running with NVIDIA. And I will go ahead and run the multi-GPU example. And if you look at this output, there's three lines here where on, for each individual GPU, we are launching kernels and doing the copies. And then at the end, we can print out the array aggregated back on our host. Device, uh, on our host. Um, something important to note here is you'll see that it's GPU 3, then GPU 1, then 0, then 2. Um, this is because, again, coferall loops are independent and parallel. So they are executing in whatever order the runtime decides it to be. So I run it again, and I could get different results, which I do. Um, and I'll go ahead and turn off the printing like before and run it with much higher size of data with n per GPU. Well, I'll give it 1,000. And that'll take a little second there. But again, you can see it's copying more bytes, but it's still copying to and from the GPU. Um, and in case anybody doubts me, I can run the exact same simple GPU one before um, on NVIDIA. There is no code changes, and it works the exact same. So coming back here. Sure, you can see it. Okay. Um, so I showed this slide earlier of all the different applications of Chapel. Um, we'll zoom in on one of these, um, Rapid Q, which is an application of Chapel written by an oceanographer working to kind of map biodiversity. Um, I'm not an oceanographer. I do not have a PhD in it. Um, so I only vaguely understand the math here, but essentially what we're having is really, really big data sets that you are running a convolution over to kind of get data back out. And ultimately you have a 3D input and a 2D output. Um, and if you've ever worked with GPUs, the word convolution probably hints to you, this sounds really, really great for GPUs. Um, and it is. And so this particular piece of code was written by that scientist. Um, it was originally done in MATLAB and was run on a very small sample in like days. Um, and it was rewritten in Chapel using GPUs. And that same sample would run in a matter of minutes. Um, and then they upped the size of the data set and were able to get even more data in the same amount of time that their previous code did. So let's look at kind of an outline of that code. Um, Essentially, what's happening here is we have some input data and some output data. That's input array and output array. And we're running a convolution over everything in those arrays, um, where that convolution is just a for loop and doing lots and lots of complex math. Um, this is the CPU version. And in a second, we'll see the GPU version. So this is the GPU version that is, runs on multiple GPUs and on a supercomputer with thousands of nodes. So some key changes that happen here is you'll see instead of a for loop, it's a for each loop. So all of that ton of math is order independent. Each iteration of the loop didn't actually depend on the previous iteration of the loop. Um, if that sounds like a GPU kernel to you, it is. Um, and so what we're hinting to the chapel runtime here is this loop is order independent. I, as the programmer, have said it is order independent, and you can parallelize it, parallelize it at will. The other thing is these kind of nested coferalls with do on. Um, this pattern shows up a lot in Chapel code. 
where the three lines, the first line is saying for every single node in my system, what Chapel calls a locale, I want you to go execute on that locale. Then, once I'm on that locale, in the second line, I'm going to say for all the GPUs on my current locale, I want you to go execute on that GPU. So those first two lines spin out across all the nodes in your system and all the GPUs per node. And then that third line for the tasks is for all of the available workers that you want to use on those GPUs, create a parallel task for them. So this three patterns gives you multi-node, multi-GPU, and multi-task execution. And again, you'll see that same pattern as before in those simple examples where you have to copy back and forth from the device. Um, so this code um, was run on the world's fastest supercomputer, Frontier, um, to get really, really good speed up. Um, so we added lots and lots of nodes and ran this code and got really fast execution. Um, a couple things to note here is, again, you know, this was code that used to take 10 plus days um, to run and could be run now in, I think, 10, 20 minutes, so less than a lunch break, and you can have results and iterate on it and get more results. Um, and the second thing is, is, as great as that graph looks, um, we're not happy with it. <laughs> you know, we always want to do better. We'd like it to be, you know, even more linear of scalability. Um, so, I mean, this graph, I think, is maybe about a year old now. There's already been improvements, and there's kind of more in the pipeline. So, lastly, um, Chapel is an open source project. Um, we, everything is developed and designed in the open. The GPU work is actively evolving to grow and support more and more use cases. Um, I'm, I'll point out this ChapelCon event um, that's happening in June. It is a free event hosted by HPE um, at ChapelCon. There is going to be a tutorial day where if you liked what you saw here today and you want to learn more, um, there'll be lots of chapel experts to help you learn that chapel code, um, including myself, um, as well as uh, a coding day where you can just sit down and write chapel code with kind of a pair programmer to help you, um, and a conference day uh, with some presentations from people as well. Um, and of course, please come connect with us across all of our different forms of social media. Um, come code with us on GitHub. Uh, we love seeing new users and new um, contributions to the project. Um, and that's all I have for you today. Um, if anybody has any questions for me about um, Chapel, GPUs, parallel programming, uh, feel free to ask. Yes. Yeah, so um, the question was, what's the um, comparison to C and C++ with CUDA? Um, I don't have exact numbers for you off the top of my head, um, but it's competitive, um, and in some cases beating uh, C, C++, and CUDA. Um, I believe if you go to our website at chapel-lang.org, uh, there are some comparison graphs there. Does that answer your question? Cool. Any other questions? Yes. So Chapel um, is, for the most part, um, currently you need to kind of pull down Chapel, build it from source, and then you can use it like you would any other compiler for a programming language. Um, that's a current active area we're working on to make it even easier to get Chapel in use. Um, but kind of the way, as you saw with that print Chapel environment, you get um, different environment variables to set up your chapel configuration. So I can change one chapel environment variable from AMD to GPU, run make, and I get a new chapel compiler that actually has support for both at the same time. So I just have to switch an environment variable and recompile my code. So, so multiple chapel installs can exist together.
So the question was, how does it um, compare across hardware platforms? Um, we currently have active support for, for GPUs for NVIDIA and AMD. Um, we're, I believe there is, there's certainly feature compar um, parity between the two. Um, performance is comparable between the two. And again, we're competitive with um, kind of state-of-the-art AMD GPU code as well as NVIDIA code. Um, yeah, I'm, there is always room for improvement and ways to get better, but it's pretty good. Any other questions? Yes. So Chapel has some experimental package support to kind of help you create uh, machine learning um, platforms and programs. And again, that's another active area of development um, where we are actually looking for people to come work with us and help us write new machine learning. Um, so if that's something that you are an expert in, uh, please come join us on GitHub and open issues and open pull requests. Um, I believe there are um, like CUDA specific um, capabilities that are not supported because we're general. Um, so for example, uh, CUDA supports um, CUB, which is a, a library that CUDA provides to do things like um, vector sums and sorting. Um, and in some cases, Chapel wraps CUB and uses it underneath. So in some cases, CUDA is being used underneath all this chapel. Um, and in some cases, we have chapel implementations that aren't. Uh, 